This might be the most difficult book for me to review in 2022. The reason is I'm just not sure what to think about it. Half of me loves it, and half of me hates it. I really appreciate the goal of the author, but the flaws in the book were so large that maybe it should be rejected altogether. Or should I recommend the book in spite of its flaws because I want more people to be exposed to the writings of the early church fathers? I don't really know what to do here. But if you have never read the church fathers yourself, especially the ones known as the apostolic fathers of the first couple centuries, you should familiarize yourself with them. And if you don't know where to begin, you don't know a good place to start, Bray's short book could be an ideal place to dip your toes into the water. But let me give you my thoughts with a few warnings first. Welcome to Rev Reads, your home for book reviews from the perspective of a pastor. If you're new to the channel and you want to discover more educational and eye-opening books, please subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date with the most current reviews. And if you're a regular to the channel, please like this video, share it with others to help them learn about the writings of the early church fathers. How the church fathers read the Bible. It starts pretty slow if you're someone who's familiar with the early church fathers. Now, I've read all of the early church fathers up through Clement of Alexandria, and I felt like the first 53 pages of what is already a, a pretty short book uh, was just a little bit too basic for me. But if you don't know anything, maybe the beginning could be more helpful for you. But my suspicion is that most people who are going to read this book could probably skip the first chapter and not really miss anything. In the body of the book, Bray walks through what he saw as the principles of interpretation put forward by the church fathers in their understanding of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Not only their hermeneutics, but also how they approach certain topics, such as creation or the end times. And he did cover some places where they clashed against each other. And at times, I felt like Bray was right on, according to what I have read by the Church Fathers. At other times, I felt like he was coming out of left field, just giving his own opinions that were entirely divorced from anything the Church Fathers wrote. Here's an example. Origen defended the historicity of Noah and the Flood going to great lengths to explain how so many animals could live together for 40 days in such a confined space. This line of argument was no more persuasive in his own time than it is in ours. Really, Bray? You have documentation that Origen wasn't persuasive in his own day, that it was common to reject his teachings on the ark. I don't know where that would come from in the writings of the Father, or when he claimed that the church fathers knew much of Genesis was symbolic, yet they calculated the years to creation literally. Now, I know the fathers would interpret a lot of the Old Testament as typology, but I'm still convinced based on my own reading that they saw all of Genesis as genuine history, which is why they calculated the years to creation. So how does Bray write that they saw it as symbolic? And here's the problem for me. Bray rarely uses footnotes in this book. So there's no way to double check on about 95% of his claims. He writes that Pelagius believed it was possible for a person to save himself based by, on works. Well, I read Pelagius' commentary on Romans, and I wholly disagree with that opinion on Pelagius. Pelagius may have rejected original sin as put forward by Augustine, but he still believed people are saved by faith in Christ. The hard part is that I think, for the most part, Bray probably got the church fathers right when he was talking about what they believed and how they approached the Bible, when he discussed how Augustine changed the way the church viewed the end times, that was right on. 
Now, while I think that change was to the harm of the church, Bray sees it as to the benefit of the church. And I just wish Bray could have presented Augustine's shift without throwing his own opinion onto the matter. Now, the final chapter on case studies, which presented how the church fathers approached 10 passages in the Bible, that was very good. And I think it was very good because Bray was a little more careful in that section to just present the views of the fathers and not mix in his own opinions as often. Although, when he did cover Revelation 21 through 6, you might think based on this book that there were not any church fathers who were premillennial, as he doesn't bring up any of the fathers who believed that Jesus would reign on the earth for a thousand years. There were premillennial church fathers. In fact, it was probably the dominant view for the first couple hundred years. But Bray didn't quote from any of those fathers. Um, I'm hoping I can just give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he didn't quote from any of them because none of them wrote a commentary on Revelation, but I'm not sure. The hardest part of this book is trying to separate the views of Gerald Bray from the views of the early church fathers, which is all the more challenging when he doesn't present views of the fathers and tells the reader the specific father that he is referring to with these views. Now, I think there's a lot of good stuff in this book, uh, especially for a book that's this small. He does a really good job tracking how different fathers approach the Bible from different philosophies and perspectives, how they changed at times from generation to generation, how they challenged each other. There's really no singular view of the early church on really any tap topic or any passage. So I think the biggest difficulty in this book is separating the, the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. The one nice thing about this book is that it is relatively short. So the positives that you gain won't require a ton of reading in order to receive them. Now, I'm glad I read this book, but I'm still just really struggling with my own recommendation of it for others. I guess if I'm being honest, that's just where it needs to be. And that is, I'm kind of right in the middle, half and half. I don't give this book a strong recommendation. The addition of copious footnotes could have made this book far more impactful, far more important. I do think you will benefit from reading this book. Just be careful to look out the pl to the places where Gerald Bray puts his views right alongside the views of the church fathers. And just be careful because you don't always know what's from Gerald Bray and what is from the ancient church history.